so I've got to remove the circlips here so I can remove those rods and lift that rack out of place and I've also got to remove this piece here which is the, the delay two screws they have anti shake washers underneath them and that little gear train can be cleaned with a bit of naphtha it, I can see it's a little bit sticky, a bit reluctant to move um, it's got a lot of spring tension pushing it to move when it's working but it certainly doesn't want to move under its own steam so there are two coupling rods here, the rods that this rack runs on I need to remove those, so I've got to get rid of the circlips Pair of tweezers with a bit more robust points on them than my normal screw handling tweezers. This pair will do. And taking great care not to have that ping off into space. Take that circlip off. Pop it over there. It's mate. I need to deal with them the same fashion. I've pushed that loose slightly with the screwdriver from the back. Get my tweezers underneath. Lift that off. Oh, I really need to get rid of the ones from inside, do I? I do indeed. Is he taking the wrong circlips off? I need to pull the rods out in that direction. Okay, the circlips on the inside, which you can't see here. That's one. And the other is tucked up behind a spring where it can't be seen easily. I'll pull that rod out because we've got one rod loose. And the other one, yeah, I need to get that circle up out too. rotate it into a position where I can get at it easily it doesn't look too bad pull that spring back I'm sure there's a trick to this, or I just don't remember what it was. Now, what if I pop that off with two screwdrivers? 
Yep. That'll do it. And see, that'll be fun putting that back. And that rod can come out. That's got a long return spring on that one, which you'll want to take off into space now, probably. Let's get that out. That's that rod. That rack, will that lift out now? It will. And I can see two fixing screws here at the base that hold the shutter to the front of the camera. And I think one at the top. There's two there that I can see. We'll try, try loosening those as well. Because what we want to do here is remove the shutter from the casting. And like the uh, retina reflexes, they are held to the casting from the rear. Yeah, it looks like this screw does go right through. Let's just slacken that off and confirm it. Yes, it does. So those four screws, two here, which were hidden behind the ground glass screen, two down here which were hidden behind the rack. Now the flash sink wire will need to be disconnected. Now those screws don't easily come out of there. That's interesting. The flash sink wire on this shutter, I may have to desolder it at this point and pull it through. I think that, yes, that'll be the case. Okay. The shutter is loose there, that's good. That was the spacer from the top of the camera that went in at this point behind me where the shutter screws in. I'll get that wire desoldered and we'll separate this. Well that wire desoldered is our shutter removed from the camera or our shutter assembly along with this plate. And here we have the other piece. Yeah those two screws are interesting they appear to be too long to be removed easily. There's uh, must be a trick to that. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a piece of foam here. They would actually pass through this casting. Um, but we don't need to remove those so they can sit there. So I'm going to put this piece aside for the moment. That's the, uh, the front piece and I will deal with the shutter, because at least with the shutter I am on firm ground. Um, I know all about the shutter because basically it's the same as a Retina Reflex S type. The shutter's used on those. The wrinkle with these is that with the Kodak shutters the drive is from the top and on the Bessomatic shutters the drive is from the bottom which means that the dials read the other way up and um, you need to be aware of that if you've got any clever ideas like me using parts from your Bessomatic on your Retina Reflex or vice versa. I'll start here by prying this drive gear off, this little drive piece. So we've got a little cam, a spacer below it And then this little piece here needs to come off. This is the piece that this cam as it rotates opens the blades for viewing as the shutter is cocked. So that needs to come off. And I suppose it would be nice if I had some sort of miniature B 
bearing retainer or something or three-legged puller but I do not that's reluctant I might leave it there for the moment, I might be able to drive that out from this side once I've got everything disassembled. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the shutter body itself from the front housing, from the focus mount. And it should be fixed with three screws. Typically that's the case. There is the shutter itself. So I'll take off the speed cam ring at the front and then see if I can push that cam right through, the cocking cam right through. Since it's going to be awkward to try and lever things off. Well, that's interesting. What's this? There's an odd colour here. I can't tell whether that looks almost like a little bit of lacquer. How did that get there? It is. A little splash of lacquer or glue at this point. Possibly from when the leatherettes were fitted to the camera. I'd have to see where that sits on the camera. That shouldn't be there anyway. That could have um, glue that's running around loose like that could certainly cause a problem. Right, so this shutter is most like a Retina Reflex 4. Um, so it lacks the XM sync, it only has the X sync for the flash, for electronic flash. It doesn't have the bulb sync. Right, so this. I'm going to lever that out. That really doesn't want to come. That's just pressed on here, but it's obviously pressed on very hard. I'm a bit reluctant to thump on the end of it because that will mushroom it out and make it even harder to get off. Normally it would just pull off, and normally it would not be as tight as that. It's going to have to come off because I can't disassemble the shutter with that in place. Mm -hmm. To work on that. I've just removed a few components from the shutter. Um, you didn't see that because I inadvertently I pushed the wrong button on the camera. But basically I've just removed the retard gear train, the delay action or self timer, and the, the um, latch that holds the shutter in the cocked position. I'm just removing the screw post that holds the B lever in position. And see if I can wiggle that off. Yeah, it's coming. Um, can I get it spring off the post? Yeah. Be very careful with those fine springs not to lose them. That is virtually all the loose stuff off there. So I've still got to get this shaft out. I might have to find a small brass drift 
and give that a tap or two and see if it'll come loose. I don't want to mushroom the end of that shaft otherwise it's going to be a bugger to get, get it apart let alone put it back together. Well it's off. I was able to drive out this pinion and I did it by placing the shutter into a, the front of a shutter case, not the one from this particular camera. And I used a brass drift and a hammer and I was able to drive the pinion back out of that um, thing. I've never seen one as hard as that. They're normally a press fit, they're normally pretty tight. I've never seen one like that. There's no obvious deformation of that um, pinion. That was an odd one. Anyway, it's off. That's the main thing. That means I can get back to dismantling the rest of the shutter in the normal fashion. And the next thing to do here is to remove the main spring the main drive spring from the shutter and in this case that is very here's, if this is at your 12 o'clock position the other tab the one that's pointing up here is somewhere between the one and two o'clock position now that's extremely uncommon to find one that's as strong as that generally speaking they're stretched and this tab will be right round to the three o'clock position that's fine. When they get to the four o'clock position, it means the spring's lost a lot of its original tension and they don't work well, particularly in reflex cameras. But that's a particularly good example. Um, it means that the camera has probably had very little use and more importantly, it's probably not spent much time sitting in the cupboard for decades with the shutter in the cocked position. So, let's carry on. Three screws here hold this shield on the back, this baffle, and those screws are all loose. You should be able to take off this setting ring for the uh, flash. Now there's a little foam collar here, and presumably that's a light trap. Um, I'm just checking to make sure the foam hasn't started disintegrating because otherwise you could end up with fragments of foam stuck on anything and everything. Now here I'll remove that screw. I want to remove the main drive cam and just check the action of the shutter make sure that the blades move smoothly and freely because I've been uh, thumping on this quite a bit to get that pinion loose and I want to make sure that I haven't crushed the shutter and caused it to, to bind up but that moves smoothly so no that's fine that should be fine so I can split the shutter these three screws hold the mechanism plate and the shutter case together and at this point the shutter is virtually identical to that found in a retina reflex 4 camera and very similar indeed to those found in a retina reflex S or a retina reflex 3 Looking at the state of the blades, they're quite marked. Um, I can see a fingerprint or two on there and I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't me while I'm being busy handling this, trying to get the thing apart. The blades are a little bit oily. Um, what I'll do is I'll clean all those blades with some naphtha on a cotton bud and hopefully they will clean up without any argument. It's possible that there's some staining on the blades 
and that will if that's the case then I'll polish the blades with a bit of brasso and then clean them with naphtha to get rid of any re remaining polish before I reassemble things. So there's the mechanism plate completely stripped and here's the blade actuating ring and looking at that it's a bit dirty looking and I expect that the lubricant on here is dried out, gone a bit stiff. Likewise round here where the blade actuating ring works that looks a bit dirty and again it's probably a bit stiff to you to move. So these components I'll just clean in the normal fashion and reassemble the shutter and then turn my attention to that front panel and see about footing, putting it all back together. I've wiped these blades down with naphtha but they're quite marked so they're going to have to be polished. I thought they'd clean up better than that but obviously that staining is uh, long standing. It's quite possible this camera has sat around for a long time with no lens on the front so they've effectively been open to the atmosphere. So I'll polish these blades with a bit of Brasso, then clean them and they should be ready to go. These blades are all nice and clean now. There's no staining visible on them at all. That's just from polishing them with a bit of Brasso metal polish. So now they will they look good and they'll work well. I'll get on with the rest of the shutter. Well the shutter is basically back together and functioning now. And if I cock the shutter, set the self timer, release the shutter, allow the self timer to run down, you'll see that that runs nicely. That timed out at one second, of course, because there's no uh, shutter speed cam plate on there. Now, my big problem taking the thing apart was getting this little device off the back of this shaft. So I've got to get it back on. And so I need to fit this shaft and fit that thing. I'll have to drive it back on probably. I'm just looking at the shaft to see if there's any reason it should have been so hard to get off. There's a bit of a scuff mark on the end and that scuff mark is probably where this little driving cam sat. It's possible that that's introduced some twist or distortion to the shaft which made it difficult to get that other piece off but to be honest I can't see any. So I think it was probably always very tight. Um, it was just un it's just very unusual. So anyway, that's what I've got to do. I've got to get that piece on there. So I'm just going to put a light wipe of molybdenum paste on the shaft. I'll do the lot. Might make it easier to install. Fit this. Make sure it's in the correct position in here in this little gap between the end of the spring and that tab and then fit this little piece and I'll have to see if I can drive that down into position without disturbing anything. I think in the past I've used um, pliers and similar instruments to deal with this problems like this but this is one thing I've got to avoid. I've got to avoid this lifting up while I'm playing with it and that tab getting on the wrong side of the spring. Otherwise I'll never get it. I'll have to open it all up again and get that in place. So it's just a little bit fraught. Yes, it will extend down far enough to get out of position. So I'll need to put a little spacer under that to support it while I drive it down I think. Well this is what I used to drive that uh, 
piece back onto the back of the shutter. This is called a staking set. Uh, the punch is a hollow punch, has a hole down the middle, just big enough to clear the shaft. In the staking set, and here I've set what's called an anvil. That's just a little stump, a stump that goes in there, and that's to support this piece from the other side. Uh, because this is down inside the recess, it's no point, I can't support it on here. But that just it supports on there. This punch fits over that pin, and this keeps it all in line. And then I just needed to tap it down with a hammer until it was down in position. So that's all back in place. Um, I'm pleased to see that because that was a, a bother and a nuisance. That's the nicest thing you could say about it. So now I can finish closing up the rest of the shutter from the front and um, then I've got to mount it back onto the front control rings which of course I haven't stripped and cleaned yet. First things first. That's my shutter reassembled. That seems to work nicely. It's got the little drive dog on the back there now. That's all good to go. But I've got to investigate this mount here, the focus mount, the, the lens mount rather, and uh, the front rings of course. I'm not expecting to find any terrible surprises there. Um, I haven't seen one, I have never had one of these apart and I don't have any drawings. Um, so I just hope it'll be straightforward. This part is straightforward enough, that's just like any other decal shutter of this style. Um, that's the trap pinion on the front ring. This is just the cover plate from the front of the shutter. There's a bit of dirt on there. Uh, I don't know what's got on there. Right, so from the front, what have we got? I'll zoom in a little bit. Three screws. All the same length, no great surprises. Lift that front ring off. Looking to see what we've got there. This of course is the aperture control ring. It's click stopped. There must be a, a, a ball or something inside there to give us our click stops. I have to open that in a plastic bag or something so I don't lose it. This is a shutter speed control ring. Now that's, in, that's pretty conventional. Um, not much to see there, that's straightforward. This couples to the diaphragm on the lenses in order to open them up to full aperture for viewing when you cock the shutter. The front lens mount looks entirely conventional. Now I've got to deal to this. I want to alter this front mount so that it'll accept a Kodak lens. At the moment it's keyed so that it'll accept only Voigtlander lenses. So what do I need to remove? Well, I've got a Kodak lens mount here, and I can check the differences. This is the same. This tab here on the Kodak mount would lock out Voigtlander lenses, prevent you from using Voigtlander lenses. That's not our problem. Our problem is up here. And it's this little piece here. See it's clear here on the Kodak one and here it's blocked. So if I remove that piece there it should be able to accept a Kodak lens without any problems. 
you can ignore that cutout there, that doesn't, uh, doesn't affect us in any way. At least I don't think it does. I have to check. Start with a Kodak lens. And here I have one. Let's see, perhaps we might need to make that notch too. Where's our red dot? It's up here at this end. There's our red dot there. What's obstructing us? It looks like over here is obstructing us. Can that be right? That's not where the red dot is. That'll be why I'm getting that wrong. That's better. So, that would fit, it would be installed here and rotated. Installed there and rotated. No, that's not it. Yes, it's definitely that tab there, that one I said originally, that's the problem. Yep, yeah. so if I remove that piece here, we'll be in business. Back after I've attempt, attacked it with the Dremel. Well, I did dismantle the front rings from here. There were no surprises with the shutter speed ring. It simply couples to the tab on the front of the shutter. The aperture scale ring here, that was interesting. The central piece here. That had a series of small indentations fitted, fit, uh, milled into it. And there was a plastic inner between the outside and the sector. And that had one hole through it and there was a ball bearing in that hole. And there was a flat leaf spring on the outside surface between the plastic and this settings ring that kept pressure on that ball and that ball was then sat in the indentations on the inner ring and that's what gives us our click stops. It's a very small ball bearing, um, very easy to lose I would imagine. I opened the whole lot up and inside a plastic bag so that I didn't lose anything. I, I'd never seen the inside of one of these before so I had no idea what to expect or what method they had used for um, doing the detent. I, I suspected it would be a ball but I didn't know how it would be, how it would be fitted. Anyway, so the shutter is now all done and that really needs to be fitted back into the front housing which of course I haven't even cleaned yet. That's my next task. Well, carrying on with this repair, um, I've got the shutter serviced. Now I'm just cleaning up the front casting really, ready to put the shutter back in there. So I need to make sure that everything that moves, moves as smoothly as it should do. Um, and I've noticed that the little cam at the bottom here, which actually cocks the shutter, that's a bit gummy. It's, the grease is obviously a bit sticky in there, so I want that out. So first, my first task here really is basically to unscrew this. I'm not sure exactly how that's held together. There's a screw visible on both sides. This is a plastic cam at the back here. This is, this is for switching the flash, flash contact here. 
I'll try unscrewing that screw first I think. I will stop this cam from rotating. The bigger screwdriver, bigger than that. And undo that screw. Hopefully that whole shaft will pull through. Well that certainly worked. I can undo this screw now. Hopefully I can lift that plastic cam off the shaft. And it's spring. And that plastic cam has just got two little projections on the back where it locks into the end of that shaft. So they certainly wouldn't have wanted to hold onto the plastic cam in order to unscrew that. I'm looking at this gear arrangement here. There's a circlip There's a circlip down here. It's almost as if this brass bush was pressed in later. I'll remove this arm here so I've got better access to that shaft I think. screw and a brass washer. See if that shaft will pull forward. No, I can't get that thing out. I'll drop the circle up here that'll allow me to pull that shaft out. Lift that off there. With a bit of luck that will allow me to lift this, take that arm out, it does. Good. Must remember to put that screw back in place before we try and do anything else. It was tucked down in this spot. It's impossible to get back otherwise. You could drop it in from the back here and that's, protect, that's how it's fallen out. I'll take that circle up out and see how I get on. <laughs> 